Shumai Pau, hello everybody, welcome to my wild Welsh garden. Well, it's suddenly summer, from one day being really cold and wet and miserable, the next day it was, it was summer and you can see blue sky and it, it's really warm. So another uh, surprise that the weather's had for us. Thanks for all your comments about the trees. Uh, I'm not going to do anything for them now, apart from maybe mulch them and give them a feed and uh, just see what happens really, see if I get any new growth on them and, and if I don't then I'll, I'll um, decide what to do. Um, to, this video is uh, entitled Moths and Hedgehogs because I just wanted to show you what's happened over the last couple of days with uh, moths and hedgehogs in my garden. I had a delivery a couple of weeks ago of something that uh, I think is really exciting and uh, I put it up in the breakfast room in the sunshine uh, so we'll go up there and have a look at it. This is where I've been keeping all the seedlings and little plants and I've started to plant them out because the weather's getting warmer uh, so they should start growing away now. These are all wildflowers, native plants and uh, they'll certainly grow better in the ground than they will in their little pots. Uh, but this is what I've brought you up to see. Uh, does anybody know what it is? It's a moth trap. So that's an electric cable, obviously. So you plug that into the mains and uh, the light shines and the moths are attracted, are attracted to the light and then they flutter down into the box. In the box there, there is um, egg boxes. Uh, that's not an egg box, is it? I don't know what that was. Yeah, ha not many because I haven't got many. Um, I've been collecting them for a while. I don't obviously don't eat any eggs. Yeah. So the moths flutter down into the trap and they just hide away in the egg boxes and then when I come in the morning I can um, count, see how many there are and also have a go at identifying them, although you know, I'm not very good at identifying things. Moths are very important pollinators but they're also very important parts of the food chain. Um, bats eat moths and birds eat moths and uh, other invertebrates um, eat them and they also feed on the caterpillars. They're particularly important for birds when they're feeding their young. Yeah, really important and of course it won't come as a surprise but you know they've declined by some horrifying amount in the last 20 years. I know nothing about the moths in my garden so this is the start, this is my chance. And there it is all set up. I've just put it on the main path going up the garden. It's not quite dark yet, but uh, you certainly get the idea of what it looks like. Well, last night I put the moth trap just up there amongst the plants, and it's now the beginning of May, and there, are, there have been insects flying in the day, and there have been butterflies flying in the day. And so I'm just going to go and see if we've got any moths last night. Oh, look. Oh, I've got a moth. Oh, and there's another one down there. So there's one of the moths. It just looks like a piece of, um, piece of leaf or something. So well camouflaged. I guess it just sits like that during the day. Well, I'm a bit worried because there's all these birds around and this is where I feed the birds. So I'm going to put him somewhere else. So I'm going to put him down there. And uh, he can hide out for the day. And there's another little one down there. I'm going to go and put him away from the birds and so he has a chance of survival as well. And there are two of these. But look at those look at those furry antennae. It's 
So I'll put them all in this border here and amongst the foliage. So that was four, four moths and three different species. So those three moths, the Brindle Beauty, the Powdered Quaker and the Pale Prominent are all moths that uh, lay their eggs on broadleaf trees and particularly on a tree called um, sallow or, or goat willow, a much maligned tree that's just seen as a weed really. But my, my understanding is that it, it supports more species of invertebrates than any other tree. And I think that uh, the willow that I have over the road is a goat willow. So I'm very happy about that. And I would love to think that these moths had, uh, had lived the start of their lives on, on my willow tree. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that happens to me when I come out in this garden. I'm, I've got some people coming for lunch, so I thought I'll come and get some kale. So I came up here, and there's the kale there. Uh, but it was really difficult to get along this path because the, there was a big camellia branch that had come down and several of these rosemary branches, so I thought, well, while I'm here, I'll just cut those off in case, you know, people want to go around the garden when they come. So, went to the shed, got my secretaries, came back, cut those off. Well, now I've got branches. Okay. So, I thought, I know what I'll do with those. I'll go and put them on the pile that I've got behind the autumn raspberries that, of course, are now all year round raspberries. Oh, that's a Ionium that's just come out of the house come out for its summer holiday. Okay, so here we are, the raspberry patch. So come along here with my rosemary branches. Drop one down there. And then while I'm here, hiding behind that geranium and that um, raspberry runner, I looked down. This is the hedgehog house. And I thought, oh, Somebody's been putting leaves in there. What's that? And then I looked in, and there's uh, quite a lot of leaves in there. So I think it's uh, trail cam time. Let's see who's uh, in there at the moment. So then I decide, well, this would be a fun thing to share on uh, YouTube. I'll get my phone and and uh, do a bit of filming and. Of course, I still haven't cut any kale for lunch, so that's the next job. So that night I put the camera on the floor just by the hedgehog house and the next morning I had 70 of these little snippets of film of this hedgehog going backwards and forwards and in and out of the house with a mouth full of leaves. So he was very busy over about a period of two hours, I think it was. And then he knocked the camera over. So I don't know how long he was at it, but yeah, he was a very busy hedgehog. quite early in the morning, about six o'clock I think. Last night was quite mild. It was forecast to be misty and foggy but it wasn't. It's a bit overcast this morning but I wouldn't say it's exactly misty. I did put the moth trap out. Perhaps you can see it shining just up there. Um, I put it in the breakfast room. So we'll go and see if uh, we caught any moths. Thank you. 
So I can see straight away that there are two on the outside of the trap and I think these are Brindle Beauties. I have an app on my phone called iNaturalist and what you do is you take a photograph of something that you found and the app suggests what it might be and if you select that uh, an expert somewhere will will confirm it and uh, yeah so I took a photograph of the moth I found the other the other day and it was confirmed by experts and I'm pretty sure it's the same one so yeah two brindle beauties And then on the inside of the flap, there's a smaller one. So I'll take a photograph of that and uh, see if my naturalist can tell me what it is. So I've put him somewhere safe. That's uh, three moths so far. And I can see there's another little beauty there. And there's another different one there. And a little tiny moth just on the side there. But, uh, this beauty was at the bottom of the box. How lovely is that? Come on, let's have a look at you. Oh, lovely. It's got lovely hairy legs and lovely antennae. So I'm going to put him somewhere safe as well. Okay, so that's your lot. So that was six moths and a crane fly, and it's May the 8th, I think. So I have no idea whether that's. Uh, a lot or not very many or whatever because I've never done this before and everywhere is really looking green and lush and lovely now and the birds are all singing I don't know whether this microphone is picking them up so we'll go and see what uh, what hedgehog activity there was last night Say hello to Ivy on our way past. Yeah, only am still waiting for it to go somewhere for the summer. Still in the middle of the path. And what I did last night was I put the camera on a raspberry stake. So we'll see what it's picked up in the night. And this was not nearly such a busy night. This was the only film that I had of the hedgehog taking leaves into the box. And then he disappeared, really, for the rest of the night. So all the moths that I found more recently, they all feed, all the caterpillars feed on native trees as well. So that's an argument, if ever there was one, for planting native trees and native hedges, if you possibly can. And what's going on with a hedgehog? <laughs> I don't know. I, I do believe that hedgehogs will often have more than one sort of resting place, not necessarily a nest to raise a family, uh, but somewhere to hide up during the day. Or, or sometimes just to rest up at night because they, they do sometimes walk a long way. So I don't know what my little hedgehog house is being used for, but it's obviously being used, which is what it's there for. So that's, uh, that's good news. Um, so I think that's uh, it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.